Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Z Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So I am at Spoonfest 2018. Spoonfest is the largest gathering in the world of spoon carvers and there are people that are come from all over the world as well as instructors that are come also to teach a pre-fest course which ran for two days prior and then you have the main day which is recording this right now this is the thursday evening so everyone arrives on site from three o'clock onwards we set up we have like an induction session which i'll hopefully be showing you shortly and then basically tonight is going to be all about acclimatizing to the environment which is a stunning environment uh, that this is set in so this is set in edel which is in the peak district in the county of derbyshire in the north of england it's an absolutely beautiful beautiful location especially where this event is held at uh, there's around about 250 attendees and like i said many instructors as well uh, a lot of the spoon carvers there are quite experienced but there are people who are new who are intermediate and every range possible if this is an event you're not familiar with and there's a lot of people i know here uh, there's a lot of people i'm meeting for the first time there's a lot of subscribers here too so there's a lot of cool stuff going on in this video i want to kind of show you a little bit of a mishmash uh, get as much detail as possible about the plethora of things that are going on so without further ado i hope you enjoy the rest of this video of me documenting spoonfest 2018 have a little bit of silence spend some time to think about all those trees that are yet to be spooned come on so this is the way we traditionally open spoon fest by splitting a billet uh, this axe was made out of iron that we we smelted last year down there out of iron ore that came from Edale here we go. Ooh. So this is fully adjustable then? Yeah, you can adjust this uh, whatever you really like uh, that way. And then you have a, a vice for tightening the... Yeah, well wow, it's... Uh, That's fantastic. Yeah. And this is this for the tension? This is for the tension. Yes, it's uh, quite easy. If you have a, a spoon, I don't have any spoon. Okay. Then uh, we need support under here. Then I have this. I put this on. I can. Like this, and now it's too, so I have to open, tightening, and now oh, interesting. it's secure here for you yep. can do. 
it's a lot of different combination to do this. That's incredible. Yeah. And then underneath as well for the legs there are you pull it out so it shapes around your legs. Yeah. Underneath there are shapes uh, with my legs. <laughs> For not sliding sideways. Yes. And uh, of course the belt on the back. Ah, okay. Oh, I didn't see that. Interesting. Yeah. So that keeps it stable that as well. That keeps it stable. So it's a very versatile uh, workbench. So, and of course you can take off everything. You can put this here if you if you want support there. Oh, yeah, whatever you like. <laughs> that is fantastic. Thank you for showing me. Yeah, thank you. Like, what's he doing? borrowed axe so we have to thank Jason for it. This side goes downwards and I like to have a bit of a raised handle so the handle will be here and that's how we're going to kind of free uh, the pizza from the log I guess. So it's always nice to see what's under the hood. So let's remove some of this bar. Does anybody have a compass or uh, anything to draw a circle with? see what happens so some over there for yeah <laughs> Got off. A good start. Oh, that works. Yeah. That works. Yeah. I was trying to think. Yeah. Yeah. Dip my toe in the water. Oh yeah. Dip my toe in the water. Oh yeah. Now dip my toe. So this is day two, the Friday. So the first full day. And uh, what I just showed you there was a congregational area where people are kind of sitting around. It's a very, very relaxed atmosphere here. Uh, people sitting around, carving, hanging around with each other, connecting. Um, what I'm going to show you now is actually the spoon shop. So that's only just opened up. And this is where spoon carvers of all abilities uh, put their wares for sale and it's the new opportunity to buy some uh, products, yeah, handmade predominantly spoons from some very, very talented people. So let's have a look inside and I'll show you the wares on sale at the spoon shop. This gentleman on the list. First name. Yeah, um. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yes. 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 Okay. So that makes it nice. 
small post on it. Yeah. This is just so I hope it's okay with the Yeah, I hate it. It's, yeah, all right, it's, getting, it's getting in the way. Um, I've got more control like that, or I feel as though I've got a lot more control. You may feel perfectly fine doing it like that. It's, it's up to you. Uh, At this point, the temptation is to chop it there. Actually, it's probably more like there. <laughs> Notice I'm always working on diagonals. So I want to take off wood off the back. If you go in there, it's hard work. If you take it off here, you can, you're ganging up on the wood. You're they do. So in between, it's not a problem. It's not more. For functionality, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing up there. You know, if it would, if the piss would go down, that would not be nice. Uh, it would be theoretically a leak. But then again, it's a super scoop, so what does it matter? But it doesn't look proper. I mean, uh, it it would bother me, yes. <laughs> uh, if it happens with an eating spoon, uh, it will be a reject. I will throw it into the fire. Right. Years ago, and uh, one of these uh, extra and. Uh, and he said he liked it a lot, and I thought he was joking, but then it ended up in the book, so <laughs> apparently... There you are, it's a compliment. Yeah. The problem with fine, you never know when he's joking. <laughs> yeah. I just assume he's always joking. So to, to make a functional hook, usually, I just carve in like, like that. And uh, I really like this, this knife, it's, uh, it's Nick Westerman's. And a good, in my opinion, a good, um, a good carver uh, is pointy because when it's pointy, you have a really narrow space that you can yeah. use to make really tight radi radii, and uh, so that's what you can do. So you can just dig in here, forget everything you learned about grain direction. I tell you why, and you can go around here. So when you get something that already looks like a rounded, a rounded hook. And you do the same from the other side. So you just dig it in, you push and you turn. And actually the secret is in the pushing because that way you carve through the grain and it's more 
through the grain, then up the grain that you do. So, and that it just works. And then you, you remove the little bit in between. Be sure to turn the knife. And then you get something that is functional as a hook. You can remove the fibers. Sometimes this is a bit fidgety and then... I work in increments of four. So for instance, I go one, two, three, four. And then I'm starting the next line one down from the last line. One, two, three, four. And then down again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. Then your next line. Shoulder. Everyone feel like they can chop in the shoulder because you've got just doing that, but you've also got holding it over the edge. And actually doing that, you can kind of. This is why it's an intermediate because this is quite a dangerous cut. But it's like you can actually because it's the same way as like hewing. You're kind of like chopping down the tree. So you can get in there and actually chop in that shoulder. But don't try that unless you feel really confident because yeah, you could really hurt yourself. So obviously carving being the central theme of this event, they provide a huge selection of wood. Fresh green wood of all different varieties for you to carve and help yourself to. So here we have a huge selection of plum. Uh, we have holly. We have alder. We have sycamore. We have a humongous pile of cherry. Cherry I think is one of the more popular ones. Uh, we have a field maple and we have hazel And so once again you help yourself and depending on what it is you want to carve But I can tell you something at Spoonfest there is no shortage of fantastic quality fresh green wood Yeah. What not to do? <laughs> Bad technique at work.
I always need to ask to answer is how long does it take and then 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 I I wanted some of the the pure Yeah. No, I like. I need to have contact. Yeah. Even there's a risk that my knife will slip in my. But, but I've been doing too many now without. So I guess I'm getting. Yeah, but this these glasses are extra strength. It's not. It's my carving glasses. <laughs> This is the risky bit because it's so close to the edge. I need to stay in line. <laughs> Again, like I say, I'm still leaving a little bit of material there to, to yeah. pull that corner all the way up. All you have to do then is just get a nice clean, clean pass it there. So I'm going to take some more off there. Yeah. The thing about the, the hardest thing about any any sort of carving is reading grain and. After you've done quite a few, you'll realise that there's, there's like a, a, transi a transition point here whereby you, you cut in that way down the grain and then you, you spin in this way in the opposite direction because that's the way the grain's going that way. <coughs> Alistair's the man that talked to about it.
Into them. I, I kind of sat around with him a bit a couple of years ago and was trying to learn how to do it but I tend to only pull it out when I do bigger spoons a lot harder than I'm used to carving. <laughs> And then tuck this one in, right where you finished. Uh, okay. Come on, Jack. <laughs> All right. There is. Okay. So you just yeah, turn that off, and then tuck this in, and then keep going. Uh, just pull it tight so that it stays put. Stays where it is. Uh -huh. We got knives here. I know. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> move Push it up. Move, move, move it further up. We call it either because we play it. Take them 
material. Jared's shown me all the cuts, but the knife holds, but, you know. Much wood to remove, much more than you think, isn't there? You start off with an enormous log and you end up with a little teaspoon. I'm kind of working away all over. Perhaps I should concentrate on them. One spot. So that is a wrap for the first full day here at Spoonfest. In the evenings, it's tools down and time to enjoy the evening with live music and amazing food. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so here we go. First of all, the guy puts his arm around the back of the lady and you join hands, right arms for the men and left arms down. And what you're going to do now is, don't do this just yet, Wait for it, wait for it. You're going to walk forward, and then after the forward step, you're going to kind of pivot and walk backwards in the same direction. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's give that a go. Here we go. Ready, and one, two, three, four. Pivot, two, three, four. Excellent. Well you should all. Well, oh, no. Oh, no. We have a bit of a crash over there. So, so you can Use one of these that's wrapped. Oh, go on, send it. Oh, oh that's nice. That's a Ben Orford one. Let's see. I've that's never that's used it, so I don't know. Yeah, that's good. You could use that if you wanted. That's very nice. You might as well use your own one. So I've got three of these, um, which are much more little pick knives, which are like I use this sort. I like this sort. Um, it, it's quite versatile for doing different stuff. It's not so important. Yeah. If it's so who, did you make that yourself? Did you? Sharp knife. Um, the I didn't make the knife. They're they're from a blacksmith called called Mary Carr, um, who made me a few, and I just literally just put handles on them like yesterday. 
I know that one I've used before. They haven't got proper sheaths yet. I'm going a little deeper, I start light and then I go deeper, pressing the, the knife longer in because it, it's getting wider. So, I'm marking a centimetre each side, and then when I start acting down the back of the handle, I'm starting from there, and likewise when I act out to the front of the bowl, I'm starting there. So, I'm remaining... It's kind of hard. Really, I should be carving in this direction, but I can't quite get at it. And if I come in this way, it splits. So the tip of the axe sometimes is handy. Can't quite get at it. Flying maybe. I'm trying to avoid it, but okay. Okay, that's good enough for now. Then I'll draw later. <laughs> uh, this is where I really draw the design that I'm looking for and I have a very clear idea what it is I'm going to carve. I mean, not right now, but once I draw it, that's what I'm going to carve. So, center line. Kind of the, the archetypal egg-shaped bowl is always a winner, usually. I don't know what I'm going to do with the handle yet. A lot of times I'll just leave it for a little bit later. So maybe make it just a touch wider. Maybe decide on length now. I won't cut it, but I'll just sort of... Uh, that represents confusion. Uh, can opener. Grip. <laughs> George, <laughs> do you see George's notes? What he wrote his notes on? Yeah. He just gave me one. I've got trumpets. Yeah, the other morning. Hmm. One of your neighbours. Like it's your marmite. Yeah, it's my mate, Mama. No, it's not. You didn't yes, make it. it. It's like it's like marble. So this is an unorthodox grip that's not it's like this. Or maybe I don't know if somebody else does it or not, but
you're going to have to apply more pressure. Um, so it's worth getting to know the kind of wood that you're using and maybe having a scrap to try and work before you Ooh, commit to a lobby size, typical size of your, what would be your typical spoon handle. Plan something out for that. You know, I'd, yeah, so definitely use up your, I've only got these planks, so I haven't got any spare ones. Um, so yeah, you, you know, use it up. What do you think? So also here at Spoonfest we have a full-time blacksmith called Josh Burrell and what he does here every year at Spoonfest including on this occasion is actually set up a, a forge um, and what he's doing is he is smelting iron ore and it's iron ore that's been foraged locally and obviously he's smelting that down into metal in which he then forges uh, 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 usually an axe uh, from that. So let's go and have a look at that setup that Josh Burrell has. So hi Josh, a pleasure to, uh, to meet you. Yeah, nice to see you too. You too as well. Can you just explain a little bit about what you're doing here then? Well, basically this is a, a small spoon fest tradition now. We're in a, an iron smelt. So we're taking iron ore, which is literally a rock, and we're going to convert it into metallic iron uh, using this furnace we've just built. But, um, it's in some ways similar to how iron was made about a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. It's uh, called a Blueberry stack reduction furnace. Right, that sounds really fancy though. It is quite fancy, <laughs> very fancy. And so how does that work essentially then? Um, what a lot of people assume is going on is that we're melting the ore, which isn't actually the case. What we're doing is we're creating a tall fire um, and it's a, a certain level in the fire, oxygen starved. And in order to complete combustion, you have to have oxygen. Iron ore is uh, iron oxide. So in order to uh, complete the chemical reaction, it has to rob the oxygen from the iron ore. And then what you're left with is metallic iron. Ah, interesting. So how long does that process typically take then? Um, we're hoping to get this done in about uh, three to four hours. Right. We're gonna put about 20 kilos of ore in and optimistically we might get about nine kilos of iron. Oh right, that's still a fair amount though. Uh, yeah, yeah, when you consider that back in the day they wouldn't ever have just one of these things, they'd have like a whole industrial site, 20 or 30 of them going at once. Right. Then they, and they were often bigger than this as well. So they were certainly capable of producing a meaningful amount of metal. Um, we tend to exaggerate how difficult it was back in the day to produce you know, a weight of steel, but uh, you can, can do it with this relatively simple. And this you constructed, is it using local clay? Uh, yeah, we foraged the clay from just up the hill. Um, farmer dug a ditch a couple of years ago and there's been spoil up there from uh, his ditch, which we had access to and uh, basically just puddled it down with um, straw and hay. Uh, built a large coil pot essentially, and that's, um, that's all it is. The inside that will make hard, but it's actually impressive uh, how insulating it is because the rest of it will stay pretty much is just soft clay. Perfect. And from the last time you did this, is it correct you forged uh, an axe out of the... Yeah, we got a good couple of kilos out of the last one and uh, took it back to my workshop in Leicestershire and um, forged it from a raw spongy blue into a piece of bar 
and then made up a, a traditional form of axe with the welded iron stuff and uh, took some of the iron because we produced low carbon uh, steel and I took some of it and carburized that more to produce a tougher edge steel and, and uh, finished it all up. Excellent. Josh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk That's about it. That's alright, buddy. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Get some nice curls there. Fred did too, I might as well do too. Just a muff. Mike muff, or whatever. Is that what they call those? It's got nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah. It'd be really hilarious to wheel your stuff with a bottle. Oh, this is so cool. So Peter, yes, a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Uh, where have you come from? I come from Denmark. Lovely. I teach, I teach uh, in a teacher training college in Denmark. Fantastic. Yeah. And we were just talking about your, your device, device here. here. Yeah, your yeah. small vice. Yeah, this is a, a portable shaving hose. It's like this. So uh, you have actually a mini uh, shaving hose without legs. So it's, it's fixed with your body, you just sit here, like this, and then it's, it's here, and the level is just above your, your leg here. And then I press my, my foot to this small pedal down there, and then I can hold the, uh, the piece of wood. It's a little flexible, but it's, it's, it doesn't matter, it's, it works, it's working. 
And this, the beauty with this, it packs away very compact, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I can show you. I can show you. Just remove the leg, the, the nail here. And then I put this one down this way. And then I put the nail here. It's, it's under pressure, so the nail will not fall out. So then it's like this. And I can carry it easily. That is incredible. I hope for my, my plastic bag. <laughs> yeah. I carry it. I guess you can make some original placets like this. So my friends, that is a wrap for this video and for Spoonfest 2018. It's currently Saturday evening. I actually need to head back to London and this runs for an extra day all the way up until Sunday late afternoon. I've had an amazing time as I always do here. I'm here pretty much every single year. It's one of my permanent features in my calendar. What I will do is put a link below to the Spoonfest website should you want to find out more information about this amazing event. I will also encourage you to follow me on Instagram. I've posted a lot of photos and videos up of my time here. So you can also check those out. And also worth mentioning, if you haven't done so already on my channel, I have recordings from the previous Spoonfest also. I know this video is a very bitty video. That, it be, that is because there is so much going on here. You have like hundreds of people that are extremely talented um, and with so much to do, to see, to experience, to kind of look at. Um, I try to do in this video is give you a little bit of a sample of everything going on. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I really do appreciate you watching. I may even see you at next year's Spoonfest. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. Peace out.